reading through the Bible in one year, February 4th, Genesis 38, Esther 9, 1 through 19, Matthew 26, 69 through 27, 14, and Acts 28. It happened at that time that Judah went down from his brothers and turned aside to a certain Adulamite, whose name is Hira. And there Judah saw the daughter of a certain Canaanite woman whose name was Shua. And he took her and went into her and conceived and bore a son, called his name Ur. She conceived again and bore a son, and she called his name Onan. Yet again she bore a son and called his name Shelah. Judah was in Kezib uh, when she bore him. And Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, and her name was Tamar. But Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord put him to death. Then Judah said to Onan, Go into your brother's wife and perform the duty of a brother-in-law to her, and raise up offspring for your brother. But Onan knew that the offspring would not be his, so whenever he went into his brother's wife, he would waste the semen on the ground, so as to not give offspring to his brother. What he did was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and he put him to death also. Then Judah said to Tamar, um, his daughter-in-law, Remain a widow in your father's house till Shelah, my son, grows up, for he feared that he would die like his brothers. So Tamar went in and remained in her father's house. In the course of time, um, the wife of Judah, she was daughter, died. When Judah was comforted, um, he went up to Timnah to his sheep shearers, and he and his friend Hira, the Adulamite, and when uh, Tamar was told, your father-in-law is going up to Timnah to shear a sheep, she took off her widow's garments and covered herself with a veil, wrapping herself up and sat at the entrance to Enam, which is on the road to Timnah. For she saw uh, that Sheila was grown up and he had not been given to, sorry, she had not been given to him in marriage. When Judah saw her, he thought she was a prostitute for she had covered her face. And he turned uh, to her at the roadside and said, come, let me come into you for he did not know that she was his daughter-in-law. She said, What will you give me that you may come into me? He answered, I will send you a goat from the flock, a young goat from the flock. She said, If you give me a pledge until you send it, he says, What pledge shall I give you? She replied, Your signet and your cord and your staff that is in your hand. So he gave them to her and went into her, and she conceived by him. Then she arose and went away, taking off the veil, um, and she put on her garments of widowhood. When Judah sent the young goat by his friend, the Adulamite, to uh, take back the pledge from the woman's hand, he did not find her. And he asked the men of the place, where is the cult prostitute who was at NAM at the roadside? He said, no cult prostitute has been here. So he returned to Judah and said, I have not found her. Also, the men of the place said that there was no cult prostitute there. Judah replied, let her keep the things as, she own, uh, as her own or she'll be laughed at. You see, I sent her. Uh, sorry, I sent this young goat, and you didn't find her. About three months later, Judah was told, Tamar, your daughter-in-law has been immoral. Moreover, she is pregnant by immorality. And Judah said, bring her out. Let her be burned. As she was being, uh, being brought out, she sent word to her father-in-law, by the man to whom these belong, I am pregnant. And she said, please identify who these are, the signet, the cord, and the staff. She had identified them and said, she is more righteous than I, since I did not give her to my son, Sheila, and he did not know her again. When the time of her labor came, there were twins in her womb. When she was in labor, one put out a hand, and the midwife took, a, took and tied a scarlet thread around his hand, saying, this one came out first. But he drew back his hand, and behold, his brother came out. And she said, what a breach you have made for yourself. Therefore, she called his name Perez, which means breach. Yep. And after a word, his brother came out with a scarlet thread on his hand. His name was called Zero. Esther. Now in the twelfth month, which is the month of Adar, on the thirteenth day of the same, when the king's command and edict were about to be carried out, on the very first, sorry, on the very day when the enemies of the Jews hoped to gain their mastery over them, the reverse occurred. The Jews gained mastery over those who hated them. And um, the Jews gathered in their cities throughout all the provinces of King Ahasuerus to lay hands on those um, who sought them harm. And no one could stand against them, for the fear of them had fallen on all the peoples. All the officials of the provinces and the satraps and the governors and the royal agents who helped the Jews, sorry, also helped the Jews, for fear of Mordecai had fallen on them, 
For Mordecai was great in the king's house, and his fame spread throughout all the provinces. For the man Mordecai grew more and more powerful. The Jews struck all their enemies with the sword, killing and destroying them, as they uh, sorry, did as they pleased to those who hated them. In Susa, the citadel uh, itself, the Jews killed and destroyed 500 men, and also killed in Parshana, sorry, Parshandatha, and Dalphin, and um, Aspatha, and Poratha, and Adalia, and, Ad- and Adridatha, and Parmashat, Parmashta, and Arasai, and Eridai, and Vaizatha. The ten sons of Haman, the sons of Hamathada, the sorry, Hamathada, the enemy of the Jews, but they laid no hand on, on the plunder. That very day, the number of those killed in Susa, the citadel, was reported to the king. And the king said to Queen Esther, In Susa, the citadel, the Jews have killed and destroyed 500 men, um, and also the ten sons of Haman. What then have they done in the rest of the king's provinces? Now, what is your wish? It shall be granted to you. What further is your request? It shall be fulfilled. And Esther said, If it please the king, let the Jews who are in Susa be allowed tomorrow also to do according to this day's edict. And let the ten sons of Haman be hanged on the gallows. So they commi- so, so the king commanded this to be done. A decree was issued in Susa, and the ten sons of Haman were hanged. The Jews were sorry who were gathered or in Susa gathered um, also on the fourteenth day of the month of Adar, and they killed three hundred men of Susa, but they laid no hands on the plunder. Now, the rest of the Jews who were in the king's province um, also gathered to defend their lives and got relief from their enemies and killed 75,000 of those who hated them. Again, it's 127 provinces, so it's a large area. It's not like one town and 75,000 people. But they laid no hands on the plunder. Uh, This was on the 13th day of the month of Adar. Um, On the 14th day, they rested, and they made a great day of feasting and gladness. But the Jews who were in Susa gathered on the 13th day and on the 14th um, and rested on the 15th day, making that day um, make, sorry, making that a day of feasting gladness. Therefore, the Jews of the villages who live in rural towns hold the 14th day of the month of Adar as a day for gladness and feasting, as a holiday, and as um, a day on which they send uh, gifts of food to one another. That's called Purim. So when you hear about, oh, oh we're going to go into that tomorrow. So we'll talk about it then. All right. Now, Matthew. Okay. Now Peter was sitting inside, sorry, sitting outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came out to him and said, "You also were with Jesus the Galilean." But he denied it before them all, saying, "I do not know what you mean." When he went uh, out to the entrance, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, "This man is with Jesus of Nazareth." And again he denied it with an oath, "I do not know the man." After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly two are one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to evoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately the rooster crowed. Peter remembered the saying of Jesus, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate, the governor. Then, when Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he changed his mind and brought back 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. So what is it to us? See to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since it is blood money. They at least recognize it. So they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field as a burial place for strangers. Therefore, the, ple- the, sorry, the field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then uh, it was fulfilled what it was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, um, the price of him on whom a price had been set uh, by some of the sons of Israel. And they gave them for the uh, potter's field, as the Lord directed me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you king of the Jews? And Jesus said, You have said so, which again means you know it to be true. 
But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. And Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he gave no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Acts 28. After we were brought safely through, we learned that the island was called Malta. The native people showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled the fire and welcomed us all, because it had been rain, begun to rain and was cold. When Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and put them in the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened itself on his, on his hand. When the native people saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, No doubt this man is a murderer. Though he escaped from the sea, Justice, capital J, their God, has not allowed him to live. He, however, shook off the creature from the fire and suffered no harm. Sorry, from, from the fire, into the fire. Because again, he was told by God, look, you're going to Rome. Is he in Rome yet? No, therefore he's going to survive and get to Rome. And they were waiting for him to swell up or suddenly fall down dead. But when they had waited a long time and saw no most worship to him, they changed his mind and said that he was a God. Because... Why not? A murderer to God in like 30 minutes or, you know, an hour or two, whatever. Now, in the neighborhood of that place uh, were lands belonging to the chief man of the island, Impubulus, or Publius, there we go, Publius, something, um, who received us and entertained us hospitably, there we go, for three days. It happened that the father of him lay sick, (laughs) fever and dysentery. And Paul visited him and prayed and putting his hands on him, healed him. When he had taken, um, say, when they had taken, when this had taken place, the rest of the people on the island who had diseases also came forward and were cured. They also honored us greatly. When we were about to set sail, uh, they put on board whatever we needed. After three months, because again, they were waiting for the winter to to stop, right? Uh, Because it was dangerous. We set sail in a ship that had wintered in the island, a ship of Alexandria with twin gods as a figurehead. Putting it at, at, sorry, in at Syracuse, we stayed there for three days, and from there we made a circuit and arrived at Regium. After one day, um, a south wind sprang up, but on the second day we came to uh, Puteoli. There we found brothers, and we were invited to stay with them for seven days. And so we came to Rome. And the brothers there, when they heard about us, came as far as so I came as far as the Forum of Appius and three taverns to meet us. On seeing them, Paul thanked God and took courage. And when we came into Rome, Paul was allowed to stay by himself with the soldier who guarded him. After three days, he called together the local uh, leaders of the Jews. And when they had gathered them, he said to them, Brothers, though I had done nothing against our people or the customs of our fathers, yet I was delivered as a prisoner from Jerusalem into the hand of the Romans because they had, sorry, when they had examined me, they wished to set me at liberty because there was no reason for the death penalty in my case. But because the Jews objected, I was compelled to appeal to Caesar, though I had no charge uh, to bring against my nation. For this reason, therefore, I have asked to see you and to speak with you since it is because of the hope of Israel that I am wearing this chain. I said to him, we have received no letters from Judea about you. And none of the brothers coming here has reported or spoken evil about you. But we desire to hear from you what your views are, for with regard to the sect, we know that everywhere it's spoken against. When they had appointed a day for him, they came to him uh, at his lodging in greater numbers. From morning until evening, he expounded to them and testifying uh, to the kingdom of God, trying to convince them about Jesus, both uh, both from the law of Moses and from the prophets. And some were convinced by what he said, but others disbelieved. And disagreeing among themselves, they departed after Paul had made one statement. The Holy Spirit was right in saying to your fathers, through Isaiah the prophet, Go to this people and say, You will indeed hear, but never understand. You will indeed see, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull. And with their ears they can barely hear, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart, and turn, and I would heal them. Therefore, let it be known uh, to you that this salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles. They will listen. He lived there two whole years at his own expense and welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming the kingdom of God 
and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness, without hindrance. Behold the word of the Lord.